Hello and welcome to a video on installing the Anaconda environment as anticipated for students in ENGR 1330 Computational Thinking slash Data Science. So this video is going to go through and install onto a Macintosh computer. Uh, the, the video is capturing the computer screen right now. And this particular Macintosh computer is a bare iron install of the Catalina operating system. So this is as if you just bought the computer in the store. If we, let's return to where we were. If we go to www.rtfmps.com, that's where the support site's going to be housed. And this navigation item here, CECE -E Python support site uh, will bring you to the page where there's a, a jumping off set of links. Uh, we're going to take this first one, Jupyter Hub Files. Let's read what it says. It's a symbolic link to a collection of IPython notebooks and other support materials. You can use the notebooks from the SharePython instance on the home page of the site. Uh, then tells you how to download the notebook. That's demonstrated in another video. So let's go ahead and take the link, and we're presented with uh, this page. As you can see, this video is in developmental stage. So when you visit the page, certain items are going to look different. In particular, the common first year link will not be available. Um, there'll be a notation on the main page uh, that, that uh, tells you how to get to the information that we're after. So here's the class CE 1330 and the reason I'm going here is it contains the desired uh, platform. Now something that's interesting for the Macintosh if we get just the Anaconda it actually includes the Jupyter Lab environment. At least it did when I test when I when I test installed it. Um, and then there's a set of modules. We'll verify if we have to get those independently or not. And uh, that will complete uh, this video. So the the modules for people that are entirely new to the Python um, world. Are, are how uh, additional functionality is added to your programming environment. In some cases, they actually were loaded when you downloaded the software. In other cases, you'll actually have to um, have to go out to the internet and get them. And then we have other videos that illustrate how to do that. It's it's not terribly difficult although there are some tricks involved in a sequence of attempting to get a remote package. So first we're going to go to, see I hope that's a link. I want to take that link and I will create a new tab. Take the link, hit return. So here's the anaconda.com environment. And Anaconda is a, is a company that uh, repackages Python and maintains it for a, a variety of end users. We are going to attempt to find, there we go, products. We want an individual edition open source distribution. And uh, when we go ahead and choose download, which we will in a second, uh, it's going to give us uh, Python. It's going to give us a package manager called Conda, and I'm not sure what the third item is. So we'll choose download, and it should recognize my operating system. Yes. So Mac OS, we're going to want to choose uh, Python 3. So Python 2 and Python 3 are almost different languages. Um, if you have Python 2 scripts and you try to run them in Python 3, 
you have to do you have to do um, several um, syntax changes. Um, I've not found it to be hard, but I've never dealt with a very large, intricate professional program when I had to port it to Python three. We can either do the graphical installer or the command line installer. A command line installer is a touch smaller. Um, I'm going to choose graphical because I perceive that's the most likely way that a Macintosh user is used to doing it. If you understand what command line installs are, you don't need this video. So let's go ahead and choose the graphical installer. So it's 400 megabytes. I'm making this recording on my home machine, on my home network. Uh, 400 megabytes is going to take better part of an hour for me to download. So I'll pause the video during the download and resume um, when it arrives. So I've started the download and it's giving me the um, current download status. We actually can watch it happen. So we've, we've already received 9 megabytes out of 400, 14 out of 400. So let me pause the video while it gets here. Okay, we're back and the download is complete. So we've just downloaded the Anaconda package and I'm going to show it in the finder. It's in my downloads. Now how you choose to manage your um, software is up to you, but I usually maintain a I usually save the uh, install packages. I believe in the case of this one I'm not going to do that because it's a continuously evolving um, snake. Notice here in the package name it says x8664. Uh, by the time this video is distributed um, Apple will have introduced Macintoshes that run uh, in the ARM 7 or the ARM, um, oh, I forget what their 64 bit environment is called, in which case you will have to know what processor your machine has because the x86 64 chipset is pretty much for AMD and Intel processors, and the ARM processors, while they may be manufactured under contract by AMD and Intel are not the same architecture. So for the time being this will work. So now to do the to run the package installer we'll double click on it and it should um, tell me the usual install thing. It's going to determine if it can install the uh, package. It's giving me a message to keep my computer secure. That's not the real reason. It's to see if they can find money but we'll um, move aside with that. Uh, we're going to have to um, accept the end user license agreement. A lot of what this thing says is uh, that if it breaks your stuff, tough. Um, and then this list of items are the various packages that it's going to install on our behalf. Something that's important are the Conda packages because that allows us to uh, maintain the uh, system over time. And the C URL package is also pretty important for other reasons. Um, it allows us to uh, write Python scripts that can actually go out to the internet on our behalf. It has the IPython and the IPython kernel, both of which are vital for Jupyter. And then here's the uh, good part. It's providing a Jupyter Lab environment and a Jupyter Lab server that's going to run on localhost. And when we get to that point, we'll do that by example. Okay, so if we choose continue, it's going to ask us to accept the end license agreement. I think you got to go all the way to the back. So I have read it as far as it thinks. I agree with it. And now we want to do the installation. Um, I would recommend for a software environment as complicated as this is going to be that we simply except the defaults. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. It's going to ask me for my administrative password. Uh, 
and I hope I gave it the right one. We'll know in a second. And it's uh, building the package. Now when it gets to the next step, which is PyCharm IDE, which is an integrated development environment, I'm going to ignore that. Um, for this course, we're doing all the development and work in the um, Jupyter Lab environment. So we don't need the PyCharm integrated development environment. Later on, if you really get into this, or perhaps you're a computer science student, uh, you'll probably find PyCharm useful. And you can install it after the fact when you feel like it. Um, those of you that use uh, Visual, what's the Microsoft one? I think it's called Visual Studio. Um, you can do a similar install in that. I've, over the years, have come to dislike Visual Studio, so I've actually uninstalled it on a lot of my machines. I find it very difficult to find where it's dropping files. So this part of the video, it says less than a minute. It may take longer. Uh, when, we're, when we're done, we will go explore the Anaconda package briefly, and I'll show an important feature is that it's installed Jupyter for us. Yeah, they use football minutes at the um, software business, so um, less than a minute, there's enough time to go get some chips and soda. And if you're using Catalina, you probably are now pretty much annoyed with all this um, giving permissions to uh, individual packages. Um, I kind of th think I understand why they did that. Uh, part of it is to protect their operating system. Part of it is actually mercenary. So I'm not going to um, even go and bother to get uh, PyCharm. So we'll hit continue. We get the blimp, blimp, blimp sound. And now we have successfully installed Anaconda Individual Edition. There's some tutorial, um, which I would recommend if you do it on your own machine, to certainly go through the Individual Edition tutorial. And I will click on that and see what it's there. Um, I'm not going to do it because it's asking me for data. But um, the important part of the tutorial is this here, how to set up environments. Because you have quite a bit of control and you can change the computational environment on your, on your machine with a couple of keystrokes. So you can have Anaconda activated and deactivated. Now I'll, I'll attempt to illustrate that uh, in a second. So in principle, we have now successfully installed Anaconda. Let's go ahead and close that. I hope I don't regret it. Um, I'm going to keep the installer for the time being. And that's in case I've made a mistake, I can just rerun the installer. So Anaconda should be now located in my Applications folder. And there it is. So this part's pretty cool. They have something called Ana Anaconda Navigator. I'll double click on that. and. Uh, first time it's going to go do some whiz bang stuff. Um, this is it. You're you're giving it permission to um, send information back to the uh, company as you get different crashes. Um, I think it's probably safe to choose this, but again, that's a personal decision. And now here's the uh, cool part. It brings you to this um, launcher page. And in that, there's a Jupyter Lab launcher and a Jupyter Notebook launcher. So unlike uh, the Linux people, because I have a Linux install that we're going to uh, mess with, um, that's uh, it came built in. You didn't have to uh, provision it. There's also something called environments, and so right now I have a base environment, and 
it's pointing to files contained in op in root, optional, Anaconda 3. Again, for the Linux users, that will make some sense. We can switch the environment. So let's see if a terminal window, um, so we're not in base. Let me see if Conda is even installed. So this is the package manager. Can't find it. Okay, so Conda is installed in that particular path. And I think if I take that same path, so I type Conda and I type the word activate. And I used to know how to do this. I think it's, uh, we'll go ahead and do what it told me to do. Close and restart the shell. Okay, well, never mind. Um, there are two environments. There's the base root environment, and then there's the actual environment that the computer is. So let's do another real quick thing. So I'm typing Python version in the operating systems, the operating system environment, and I believe it's going to return Python 2.7. Yeah, so the... Um, uh, Catalina Operating System default installs its own Python 2.7.16. However, we thought we just installed Python 3.7, so now we have to go and attempt to find that. Let me go back to the home, and I'm going to launch JupyterLab. Uh, there's a few other uh, tools here. You may find that it's useful to install the RStudio package, but that can be done later. So let's launch Jupyter Lab. And so let's look in the URL. In our browser, it has gone to a server called localhost 8888 slash lab. So localhost is the default name that all um, computers that operate web servers have. And actually, during the install, it installed a very lightweight web server on our machine. Localhost is not routable, so if two people next to each other type the same thing, they're going just to their local computers. In fact, that's why it got its name, Localhost. And anyway, in the lab, um, it's got a little bit of a file system manager here and some various uh, notebooks and consoles that are available. I'm going to open this terminal. So this is running through localhost. And again, I don't have um, so we're still in the uh, um, version 2.7.16. Go to the launcher window and we'll launch a notebook. We're going to do something very simple. I think it's shift enter will um, we'll run this notebook. Okay, so it ran, so we we have installed the um, Jupyter Lab environment and subsequent videos will go into how to manage that environment. So let us now try to um, determine what the kernel is. Uh, to do that I'm actually going to uh, want to go 